Well, a warm welcome to this talk, and we're talking to our friend and colleague in Uganda, uh, Wafafa Andrew, who's a medical officer. Welcome, Wafafa. Thank you very much. Uh, it is a pleasure to be speaking to our people on a YouTube community once again. Now, you're looking very well and healthy, and I'm glad to see that you're alive, because uh, you have really been quite ill quite recently, haven't you? Yeah, I was uh, uh, sick uh, due to malaria. And in uh, Uganda, malaria is very common. It is actually endemic in 98% of the population. So I got the infection, uh, but uh, because I got treatment in time, I was able to survive. So is it actually a life-threatening disease, malaria? Yeah, malaria is uh, very dangerous. Uh, the uh, the, it is caused by some parasites. We have parasites like uh, Flosparum, Malari, Ovel. Uh, but uh, in Uganda, we find that the uh, majority of the malaria cases are due to Flosparum, which, is, uh, which causes the most severe form of malaria. So in, it causes about 95% of the malaria in Uganda, and it's the one that uh, infected me. So it is very dangerous. It kills the uh, children. It kills like all people of ages. But of course, it is common be killing children and the uh, old people. But uh, at least everyone uh, has ever gotten infected with malaria if you have been in Uganda for some good time. And tragically, uh, some of the children that were on that medical camp when we were there, of, uh, at least one of those children has died of malaria after that time, haven't they? A very sad situation. Yeah, we, we lost uh, a child due to malaria, uh, not uh, only that one, uh, but uh, even of recent, uh, there are very many people that, uh, that have reported who could have died uh, due to malaria. But because we were not uh, able to reach like everyone, you know, we, we do community work, but the population is big and this burden is also big. So it is uh, difficult sometimes to reach those children in time. We have lost very many, even apart from the one we saw at the camp, there are others who are very many who have died due to this condition. Mm -hmm. So what happened with you? You, you were, When did you start feeling ill? Were you at home or at work and what happened? Yeah, what happened it was like uh, in the evening actually I was uh, in the community for our community work and uh, I started uh, feeling weakness and uh, some headache with some uh, general body pains. So I went to the nearby health facility and uh, I tested. I was able to travel from the village to town. Not actually, not the facility that tests was not even in the village. I had to go to town and then uh, they tested me for malaria, but uh, it turned uh, negative. So I, I didn't swallow any medicine since it turned med uh, negative because I didn't want to, to mask the signs and symptoms. I waited, I thought that maybe it was due to fatigue, so I tried to rest, but uh, the following day I was uh, continuing to feel more worse. So the weakness was increasing, the pains were increasing, and the next day I couldn't like go to work because the appetite was not there. So I wasn't feeling uh, well at all, I was just feeling weird. So I had to go back to another uh, place where they tested and they found that uh, actually I was having malaria. Mm -hmm. So why was the first test negative and the second test positive? Yeah, so uh, it, it could be that uh, it could be the skill of the person who tested. Though in most cases, of course, the script doesn't need uh a good skill but uh, are these things that are made like scripts you know there are also factory errors so sometimes we can uh, have uh, uh, scripts that can give a false negative but of course the signs since we have been with malaria also for a long time 
uh, the signs can never deceive. You can really see, I know that this is malaria. So after it turned negative, I couldn't even suspect any other thing. So I just had to move to another place the following day and it turned negative. So the problem could have been with the, the strip or the skill of the person who was testing. Mm -hmm. So you, 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 got, you got two red stripes on the strip, did you? Can we have a look? Yeah, yeah, I have them. Uh, this one is the one for the second place. Yeah, it has two lines that shows it is positive. And then this one has one line. So this one is the one that showed that it was negative. Then we have the one that showed that it was positive. Yeah. So you started feeling ill. I'm guessing you had quite a high, high fever at that time as well, which is why you were feeling ill. Yeah, I did. My body temperature was high. I could really feel that uh, yeah, I was hot. My body was hot. Uh, generally, the, the, the thing is uh, when malaria comes, it, to many people it looks like simple, but it is something that is very weird. It just messes you up. You can't understand yourself and in a very short time and the rate at which it progresses to worsen is very dangerous. So I was feeling a lot of uh, weird signs and symptoms. Now, because of your clinical background, you were able to recognize the clinical features of malaria. So you went and got tested. Um, what would happen if you were an uneducated person in the village? Yeah, if I was uh, uneducated, it would have been a different story and that could be the reason as why uh, many people die in the villages. Uh, now, in the first place, when I got the signs and symptoms, I, I because at least I was able to get support of reaching the health facility in the first place, so I was able to test. Uh, but if I was not, I would have... Uh, thought of buying some medicine that can relieve the pains that I was having and that would be any painkiller or anything like a paracetamol that would bring the fever down or the clofenac just to be able to take away the body pains that I was having and that is how I could continue and in the end the signs and symptoms would be hidden and the disease would progress and I would end up dying but also uh, if by chance I got tested and uh, it turned out to be negative in my local thinking I would think uh, that uh, this would be something that is caused by maybe spirits that uh, has nothing to do with medical because when the result turns negative in most cases what people do uh, they resort to to the med uh, to the traditional ways uh, of treating and uh, some of those people or the traditional healers they have no medical knowledge and they always want money they have an explanation for every disease so they would end up deceiving me and i will not get the medical care so the result will be dying so I really thank God that I was uh, lucky and I was able to test myself and I started treatment. And the reason that this falciparum malaria that you have in Uganda, which is the most common form, is so deadly, is it because it can cause cerebral malaria and uh, renal malaria? How does cerebral malaria manifest itself? Yeah, here cerebral malaria is uh, very dangerous. I have uh, seen several cases of people with cerebral malaria and those with uh, other complications like renal failure due to malaria. Uh, but uh, people who get uh, cerebral malaria, most especially children, you find that uh, uh, they come, they bring them when they are unconscious and uh, uh, they are in coma. Like for those of you who know that state when someone cannot be aroused. So if someone will be in coma, will not be understanding. And because of that, they will just be supporting 
treatment will not be actually only anti-malarials, but we put oxygen. Sometimes it even affects the breathing. We feed them through the NG tube. Uh, some of them come when they are convulsing. So it is uh, something that you don't wish to see. Sometimes even people who come with the cerebral malaria, uh, when it has not reached a state when they are in coma, they may manifest with some signs that you may think they have a psychiatric problem. So it is uh, very complex. Mm -hmm. Now, if someone is admitted to your care in a coma, uh, are you normally able to save their lives? Yes, uh, if uh, I'm in a facility which has uh, the requirements like the oxygen cylinder when we are able to transfuse and do those things, uh, it's not a must that uh, those people will survive because by the time they come, sometimes they come you know, when they have severe malaria, I mean severe anemia, together with that. So you battle a lot of things. By the time they have cerebral malaria, you have a lot of things. So sometimes you succeed and sometimes you fail. So that is uh, what happens. But when someone is lucky and you get all the things that are needed, maybe blood, the anti-malarials, they survive. But sometimes someone may even come when they are in coma, but maybe that family doesn't have money to get the medicine. And you know that uh, the population is also big. And sometimes uh, these medicines are out of stock in those uh, facilities like the regional referral hospital. And that not everyone can be able to reach the regional referral hospital because you don't have an ambulance. Uh, they are very far. Some people can't even from the mountains and we have this facility uh, which is in town. So uh, because of that, there are a lot of patients and we are usually run out of those things. Uh, that's why it is important for us maybe to try to arrest uh, this thing from the community level because sometimes uh, there is nothing much that I can do. We try but people end up dying and sometimes we are overwhelmed by the numbers. So when people get cerebral malaria in the villages, do they always die? They'll never just wake up on their own? They, they never just wake up on their own. Those ones who don't get uh, the care, it just keeps on progressing. Malaria is something that is very stubborn. It just keeps on creating more problems, like the more you stay with it when it is not treated, those parasites in the body just keep on increasing. They never reduce. So there is no hope that uh, without intervention, uh, those people will recover. Without, med without proper medication, you die. There is no any other option. At what time of day are people mostly bitten by the mosquitoes that cause the malaria? Yeah, mostly in the evening hours, like at around 6 p.m. in the evening and onwards. Uh, but uh, malaria with, with the mosquitoes here is not uh, a rare thing. Even where I'm seated here, I see it like every day there are mosquitoes everywhere. Every day you have to hear a mosquito somewhere. So everywhere there are mosquitoes. Uh, so if you're not protected and you will get a bite, that sometimes maybe people, have, we are bitten sometimes when that mosquito doesn't have a parasite in it, but mosquitoes are everywhere. Every evening there's a mosquito near someone, at least in Uganda. So you can get bitten in the night. So would it be a good idea for people to sleep under mosquito nets to stop them getting bitten? Yeah, that is a, a very great step in trying to prevent uh, the contact. It is uh, very important. It is important uh, to have everyone, if it was possible, would have everyone sleep under a treated mosquito net. Like of recent, we 
donated over 1,500 mosquito nets to the people. Uh, in the villages where we donated, at least it has helped, but of course we were not able to donate to everyone because we didn't have enough supply. Uh, but uh, we have a lot of people. We try to give at least every household, though some missed, but we just gave one per house. But now you find a house uh, has uh, sometimes like 10 people, 15 people, five, uh, they have children, all the people. So one cost will try to help, uh, but it can't address everything. So we do that as we also wait uh, for the government maybe at a certain time they may also come in uh, but uh, we want to save uh, people with what we have so right now on top of the mosquito net uh, we are trying to just teach them generally about malaria and some of uh, other preventive measures that uh, people can adapt apart from just using the mosquito net. Uh, but the mosquito net is one of the most, uh, let me see, effective way of reducing the mosquito contact. The, because of its low technology, it has been there for long. At least it's not complicated. Everyone knows how to use it. You can teach them and they know how to use it well. So it is very good. So we can prevent malaria with mosquito nets and, and uh, our project must have saved many lives because of the mosquito nets, I would think. Yes. But if people still get malaria in the villages, how long is it from when they get the first symptoms of malaria until they go into coma? Uh, so in most cases, it also depends on a person. Uh, like now for me, I think, I don't know, because of exposure, it doesn't really progress very fast. Uh, but different people have different uh, levels of immunity. So it varies. Uh, for me, I've not been in coma myself because at least I'm able to treat in time. Uh, but those ones that I have seen in most cases, it doesn't exit, it doesn't exit uh, like two weeks. So if they start feeling the signs and symptoms, within one week, they will be bedridden. They will be having some other uh, complications. But in the second week, that's when you find them in coma. So this, this, this first week really is a window of opportunity to treat the malaria. Can we treat it with simple oral anti-malarial medication at that stage? Yeah, malaria, if you detected in time and you start treatment, you have a chance of not getting even, uh, of not getting like bedridden. There's a very high chance if you detect immediately. That's why we teach these people to know the signs and symptoms and everything. Because in, for me, when I get malaria, I will know when I just get one sign, I'll know that this must be malaria. And when you go and test, it is positive. So in most cases, apart from last time where it first turned negative and I had to move in the next day without treatment, uh, that is when I even had to go down, not to go to work. But on the first day when I started feeling the signs and symptoms, if it had turned negative and I got treated, the second day I would have gone for work. I would not have gone, I would not have been bedridden. And if people in the villages take paracetamol, which is the same thing as acetaminophen, will that disguise the symptoms of malaria and allow the disease to get worse? Yeah, it does. And the, the, the funny part of malaria is that he, those signs are not like constant, they are intermittent. Like they are, they, they are not, they are on and off, that's what I can say. Like you will have the, the spikes in those signs and symptoms, most cases late in the evening or late in the night when nothing can be done. So sometimes even a child can play during the day very well when they have malaria. And then at night, they get those signs and symptoms. So 
it is very it is very stubborn so when you have a high fever in a malaria episode you must feel really really bad do you yeah you really feel bad you really feel bad and it just comes with other things no appetite for food sometimes you're vomiting it just brings up everything like you feel so bad you don't really care whether you live or die you just feel so so sick yeah you just feel so sick so weak uh you 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 lose interest in everything just like that it is it's not a good feeling it's a very terrible feeling so we're going to carry on with more health education we're going to carry on with more mosquito net distribution we're going to carry on giving oral antimalarials for early stages of uh, treatment of malaria in the villages we're going to have a very careful uh, observation of the children to make sure they're not getting malaria because it just makes me want to cry that some of those children that we saw in the health camp died it's just completely tragic and occasionally when these cases are missed we're going to treat with intervene intravenous antimalarials for the cases that do become cerebral malaria yeah it 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 is a a terrible thing uh we we have lost a lot of them and uh, even as i talk then if you just went to what you'll find a child who is battling for his or her life so we we lose a lot of them a lot of children die it it depends when you are inside there and that, that's why we try every day to make sure that we sensitize people we try our best to make sure that we deal with this dangerous disease so we've got a, a, a nationally uh, authorized uh, ngo now that, uh, that that we've started in uganda what's that called yeah our organization it is is called the buwanga wet health foundation I, we have uh, even the website wanga.org i think i will leave in the description the link to it you can go and check about it uh, we have been uh, given a license to operate for five years and uh, now we can operate anywhere in uganda this is all completely legal and transparent yes it is illegal wherever we go we are allowed to be there the government is aware of the activities that we are doing and now we are even ready to pattern or to work with the other organizations the churches everyone who is willing to work with the, our organization is now very free to work with us there is nothing to worry about now we can receive any amount of money because the government even knows us now uh, we, we don't have now a limit it is a legal entity are you getting any government funding at the moment no at the moment we are not getting any government funding actually most of the people were in the region where the, we are serving i think on the health camp when you're there you saw that we had a representative from the minister of health so most of them are actually now looking at us because of the population uh some times uh things that come from government they may take long so most of the health officials and the, the people are actually now looking at us we, we are the hope that is always present uh because we are always with them uh we are not uh, paid by anyone to go and serve the people we are motivated internally so that has really given people hope and uh, they really want to always receive care from us because we are always there uh but sometimes when you are just employed or maybe a government worker it sometimes to some people it is not uh, something that is at heart you know you go get paid to go and see those ones who are able to come to the health facility how about those ones who are not able to get transport to the health facility so we are looking for everyone even those ones who don't get the chance of reaching the health facilities if i send you some more money can you save some more lives 
Yeah, if you did, a lot of lives can be saved, uh, just like you've seen in the past. We always have a lot of people. Actually, the thing is resources. Uh, in most cases, we only do up to what we have. So sometimes uh, we stop when we run out of resources, but there is great need. Whatever we receive, we make sure that uh, it is used very well and it is used for the right purpose. And in most cases, I deal uh, with the people direct, like, like some people will donate and they will want that money to do a specific thing. So sometimes we, we work together and that money will go and do what you really want in the community. And some people will just say that uh, just use it the way you see it fit. So I distribute that money, but I always publish the information on YouTube. Uh, but there are those people that uh, we are not uh, able to publish on YouTube. Like there is a child who is battling with the sickle cell and is having malaria also at the same time. is in a very terrible state. Uh, we couldn't uh, publish it on YouTube, uh, but still we are using the resources that we got from people who watched. So there are some things that you will never see on YouTube, uh, but there is work ongoing because we respect the privacy of people. Uh, people who we put on YouTube are people who have consented, but even those ones who don't consent, we can't refuse to help them just because we are not going to capture them. So there is a lot that is going on uh, in the community because of what we receive from the people. This partnership that's made Buwanga possible has come from YouTube and the, the work we've done together. I think that's how it started. So this is one of the really positive things to come out of YouTube, I think. Yeah, it is really good. It has been able to connect us, people from different places. Yes, there are other bad things, but at least that one, uh, with the work that is already going on in the community, we have the milling house going on. We have a lot of things on ground just because of the people who came through YouTube. So I'm really grateful. And I'd just like to say to everyone, I had the privilege of working with Wafafa last uh, September. Last September, wasn't it, Wafafa now? And... Um... I, I know that the, I, I know that the medicine is well practiced and I know that all of the resources go to where they're supposed to go. So, Wafafa, I'm delighted that you're better from your malaria. Is that you? Are you cured now? It won't come back. You're completely cured. <laughs> I'm now uh, sure, but uh, there is a possibility of reinfection. I, I treated, so I have to, again, uh, continue sleeping under a treated mosquito net. I think I caught a bite from the community. Sometimes we leave late, uh, but at least I've, I, I'd, I'd really taken care, I'd taken long for over a year without getting it, but it got me. So uh, me, I am careful to that level, but it got me. How about those ones who really don't know anything? So that's why you find that some people actually treating malaria almost every month uh, but uh, yeah for me i will now be very careful yeah. and of course the children are at particular risk who is the well we're trying to help everyone but to save the lives of children is is a particularly good thing to do yeah children are a priority because in most cases they don't know what to do and you know you can't tell them to adhere to something sometimes they play from out, outside until late, and you can't stop them from uh, playing. Uh, but uh, we are trying to design all materials to uh, favor these children and even adults. Soon we are going to enter even schools uh, where we are going to design programs for teaching these children such that we have everyone on board. And have you got a stock of anti-malarials that we've bought that you can give out if we need them in the villages? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I get them, we can give to the people just like we did some few weeks ago. We gave some. Of course, people are always very many. Those are the people 
we didn't even inform and those are just the people who came for for our meeting but you saw the numbers they turned out and there were yeah, very yeah. many yeah okay Fafa, i'm glad you're so much better uh thank you for telling us about your personal suffering it's um but it's something that i really think can be used to help uh, many people and anyone watching this video of course can get involved uh, in any way that they like they can communicate with you they can donate they can subscribe to your channel click like on the videos all these things help yeah they thank do thank you for watching you're welcome <laughs> bye <laughs>